Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, I am Zon the Daddy Dev. I also go by the moniker title pending on the internet. And I am here to welcome you, sages. Welcome you to the inaugural, inaugural? First official Rukuko devlog. Unlike my other videos, this series will focus specifically on the devlog for Rukuko. Why? It will focus on the features and better yet, why people should be interested in this plugin for Godot 3.1. Now, what is Rukuko? Well, simply stated, it is a story management plugin. And what that means is, if you're interested in making any game with story mechanics, you should consider using this plugin for Godot 3.1. Why? Well, simply put, something that has story mechanics, some examples, would be a visual novel has story mechanics. A game series like The Witcher 3, action RPGs have story mechanics, right? Uh, you know, considering the Fallout 4 series, which Fallout 4 starts as a turn-based RPG with story elements and then slowly becomes a shooter with story elements over time. It's a beautiful development history, right? Excluding Fallout 76. We're not going to go there. The point is, all these games, what they have in common is simple. They have choice. They have player choice that affects the story or how NPCs interact with each other, how NPCs interact with the player. How do these systems work? Well, the mechanics are relatively simple. They track the player's choices amongst a series of several conversations, and then those, um, you know, <laughs> those uh, conversations, those choices by the player, after being tra uh, tracked, then give the player different options, choices, or gameplay within a game. And what Wakuko aims to do is create these types of mechanics in an easy-to-use plugin via custom code and easy-to-use templates so that anybody who is new or is uh, experienced could potentially use this for their game jam games to their intermediate or long-term potentially commercial projects. That is the goal. It is lofty. But Jebediah has been working on this for two to three years. I've worked with him on and off, and I believe we can create something like that. All right, now let's talk about some of the things we've worked on, and then I'll go and do some of the more mundane, maybe less interesting things. All right, so right off the bat, what we're doing right now is the first template we're going to be working on is a basically a visual novel text-based simulator. And, you know, looking at games like um, Mystic Messenger as one example, uh, amongst other examples, the idea is to create a game where, or a template where the player is basically um, interacting in a world where text messaging will tell the story. So the first thing here in the prototype, as you'll be able to see here, is just getting Rukuko to just basically show uh, you know, how text messaging can work. Now this is very early prototype, I do apologize, but this is a devlog and I'm really proud to do these. So as you can see here, it's again, these are just tests. We have a character to pop up. Uh, the, 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 the animated text is going to change. I've got to create some ass, art assets for this so that it pops up more like a regular uh, text should for the simulation. Uh, another thing that's interesting is that you think about market and you think about player experience. You know, for the last, well, actually more than 10 years, players have been using text messages in their regular daily life. That's why I think games like Mystic Messenger and similar text simulation games that are visual novels in essence have really taken off. Now, another thing that, that Jebediah has been working on is as I've been you know going back and forth with him on how to make the template as, as a designer. I guess I'm a designer. I'm doing all sorts of other things. Why not? Um, is I came up with the notion like, why couldn't we use emojis? Emojis are open source, and emojis are how people actually emote feelings. And what better way to have uh, characters in a game uh, emote feelings but with emojis? So this is one of the features that is actually as a template that it's being put has been put into the current build of the plugin of Rukuko. Again, this is a plugin for Godot 3.1. So let's see some. Does it get those popping up? Ah, oh, well, at least they're in there. 
Okay, here we go. So again, this is just another way to help uh, make a small type of game. Uh, we want to make better templates, but the idea is, is that I understood from a game design perspective how to make this type of game. And um, this works out. This is going to be the first template that we'll start uh, using in uh, certain game jams, so forth and so on. And again, this is not going to be exclusively to us. This is free and it's open source for other people to use this plugin as it is and where it stands. Now, before we go any further, we do have to mention some other things that I do want to get to. Number one is, you know, some people may consider how is this different from RenPy or better, how is this different from Twine? And I, I'm a huge fan of Twine because using Twine is very easy, accessible if you use like the most simplest version of Twine and the Twine coding. Whereas you can actually create stories and branches and test out the narrative flow of a story and, and related to multiple endings. And I love Twine for that. And I would probably more than likely will still use Twine because it's very easy to use at its base functions for checking story and, 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 and mapping out where the player could go. RenPy is also amazing. I'm a, I'm a fan of the Doki 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 Literature Club, which was a big hit using RenPy. And both programs, if you know, you know some programming or coding, RenPy being Python and Twine being more HTML or JavaScript-y, uh, you can actually create some really amazing complex games. However, the thing about it is, is that what Rokuko is and how it's different is it's not, it's not an engine for, for visual novels. It is a plugin a story management plugin for Godot 3.1. So what you get right off the gate is you get a, a plugin that is connected to 2D and 3D game design. That's right. You can make very simple games that are 2D that you can make with RenPy or Twine quite easily. Or you could make with this plugin and Godot 3.1, you could make like complex games like the Telltale games or something like, you know, Life is Strange. Or again, as I mentioned, you can branch out and you can add it the story-driven mechanics to like a top-down shooter or a platformer or random 3D objects bumping into each other, puzzle games, whatever. That is what the aim of this plugin is to do, is to give anyone access to ready-made tools to do narrative-based mechanics within the Godot 3.1 engine. And that's one of the reasons why I support it and I'm excited. Now, of course, we have to mention uh, GD uh, Quest. Moreover, Nathan is just prolific at what he's done. Uh, the people that have been on board with this project are making some great tutorials for just anyone to learn about Godot. And it's great and that's really amazing. And so there is a tutorial from GD Quest that is related. And I have to say this, I backed two Kickstarters just have to say that because that's how much I love GD Quest. Anyway, getting back to the point. Um, the thing is, is that writing and loading uh, conversations in Godot dialogue tutorial, it's a good series and it's a good way to get dialogue started. However, you know, me and Jebediah have talked how this, this thing that he's working on, this thing that, well, this thing that he started and built, this thing that I'm trying to help uh, develop is different is simply it's got all these different features that are there. You know, you've got um, instead of it being just like a simple line dialogue like the JSON method mentioned in uh, the GD Quests tutorial, you have like things like, you know, say uh, normal dialogue, ask for player keyboard input, um, menu to give players like, you know, to uh, give the player to give player choice. You have history to see uh, previous dialogues. You have a quest system. I, I worked with Jebediah on a Game Jam game. There's a quest system built in there. We have notify to notification players. We have custom functions. We have nodes to make things change with dialogue. We have custom G GUI nodes to easily change global variables. Global variables are Rukuko variables, which if change send specific signals, also they can be used in dialogues by putting them between brackets. Also for dialogue text, you can use BB code or markup language, almost like in RenPy. Also, you there's a lot of also's in um, Jebediah's writing, sorry. Also, you have uh, built-in save and load and setting systems and a GUI ready for it. This is Godot 3.0 right now. I'll talk a little bit more about the save stuff that we're dealing with 
in a second. Uh, for now, developers must use GDScript, uh, VS, JSON, or Rakugo Raku, Raku, script uh, will be added in the future. And again, right now, we are just one main programmer. That's Jebediah. I'm not the best programmer, <laughs> in, as I've said many times before. And what Jebediah is doing is that he is working on the VS, JSON, Rakugo script. But that's it's going to come out in time. I mean, these aren't things that are going to happen overnight. Again, I am hoping that the more I do these videos that we can find... Uh, more people considering to join the official team and, you know, actually uh, help uh, build more of these features and functions, not just for this engine, but hopefully as people do game jams or their own personal projects, they can use this system and add to this plugin over time, slowly but surely and steady wins the race. Now about the save features that Jebediah wanted me to include in this video, this first, first official devlog, as this is a thing that we are devlogging about and that we are having some issues with. I need a bigger pen that shows. Ha ha, ha ha, sorry. Um, that is simply that there has been a issue with porting, moving the, the, the coding from Godot 3.0 to 3.1. And now we're having issues with the save load feature. That's a pretty big feature to, uh, to, uh, to have issues with. So I've been brainstorming in the Godot community and I can put a link to, plays only for two months. Yeah, see, okay. So the thing is, is I'm gonna put a link to this and you can see the discussion on Facebook. If you're Facebook phobic, which is fine, there's a reason to be Facebook phobic, you can actually just connect to our Discord where you can actually, you know, contact uh, me or uh, Jebediah directly. The other way that if you're interested, have any questions, concerns about this project, and thanks for getting to the end of this video, uh, on the different Rokuko, <laughs> the Rokuko page, and I'll put a link at the bottom uh, in the description on this video, uh, also highlights where we're at, questions and answers, common questions and answers that people uh, have had. And finally, you can leave your own comments here uh, and questions right here regarding the project, okay? And finally, you can also put comments or questions about the project in, again, the comments of this video. You can like or subscribe me, but I'd rather you just follow our devlog on itch.io as I'll be putting specific videos, the devlog videos for this project there. You've been amazing, you've been wonderful. I'm at least under 14 minutes. I'm gonna end it here. Uh, thanks so much. I hope whatever you're working on turns out amazing and you finish it, whatever you want to do and stuff I'm going on too much. Insert catchy phrase here. I hope to see you in the next one. Bye. Hitting that stop button right now.